Very happy Saturday to you all. I'm very happy you all showed up. This is my favorite thing to do because I get to talk to many of you all at once. And that really helps to advance your progress, which as much as you enjoy getting better, I enjoy watching you get better. Gives me great joy. So today's webinar is gonna be an open Q&A. So you can ask me any questions about the system or about golf or equipment, whatever you'd like, while I discuss the value and importance of adhering to the process. So the process, we all hear a term, the process. You know, the Philadelphia 76ers had a process for seven years. The process in what I'm teaching you is probably the most important thing I'm trying to teach you. More than just teaching you how to hit a good shot, I want to teach you and empower you with an understanding and a process that allows you to become autonomous. I want to empower you with a clarity and an understanding so that you don't need my help. Because if you were to go play a tournament, unless I was your caddy, I couldn't help you. So you're on your own. And that's one of the that's one of the things that is the nature of the game. It's a very individual game. And so you can't receive that outside help from me, but if I can empower you with a clarity and an understanding, then not only will you be able to fix yourself, but you'll be able to continue to grow and develop more skills. So the biggest difference between you and I is perspective. I've been teaching this system for 30 years to thousands of people. So I have the perspective of knowing that when students really follow the process, they improve. Simple as that. But then I also have another perspective from a player's point of view, not just teachers, as a player. So I, I teach myself how to hit the ball left-handed just for really the fun of it and to try and understand what it is for you to go through the learning process. Oh, enough trouble writing. Well, somebody just came off of mute. Hey, Steve. So in order to, hold on, just letting some people in. So the perspective that I have is I'm teaching myself how to play left-handed golf is that I have no knack for it. It's not comfortable to me. It is not my instinct to swing a club left-handed. So it becomes a little bit more like you, where I'm not coming to the table with all the experience from all the years that I've played right-handed. And I think one of the biggest differences is when I'm practicing left-handed, if I hit a poor shot, I don't change anything. I don't tinker with anything. I just continue to do what it is that I'm trying to do, and I do it better. So what do we do in the long game and in the short game? What do we do, and what is it that I try to do better? Well, we get deep closed in the setup position. You're always pushing on the boundaries of how deep closed you can get into the setup position. It's the setup that immediately allows you to advance to the head of the class with your athleticism. You're not going to be able to do what I do athletically as a golfer. It's just because I got too much time and experience on you. But when you get into the deep closed setup position, it's very easy for you to do what I do as a golfer. So that's why that deep setup position is so important. So then what else do we do? We have a very clean focus just on planting the weight, not on moving the arms, not on micromanaging the club, not on hitting the ball, not on the result of the shot, simply on focusing on planting your weight. It's a very clean and sole focus. Now that's a very important part of the process. And then from there, as I said, as I'm trying to teach myself how to play left-handed, when I hit poor shots, I don't think, oh, the swing is wrong. Oh, the system is wrong. Because I know it's right. I know it's right from my own perspective as, as a player, but also as an instructor. And so because I know it's right, I don't tinker. I just try to do what I do and do it better. So just so you know, you know, I, I'll hear sometimes with students, Oh, I, I was hitting the ball so well, then all of a sudden I started shanking it and the, the whole thing kind of unraveled. I shank them too when I'm practicing left-handed. 
And when that happens, I kind of have a chuckle. It's interesting to me. I think, oh, well, I screwed up. I didn't do exactly what it was that I was trying to do. So I don't take it personally. I watch the shot. I learn from it. And I use it as motivation to try to do what we do and do it better. One of the worst mistakes that you can make is when you start to tinker in a very well-intended way. I have no doubt that if any of you tinker, all you're trying to do is get it right. But when you tinker, you start removing yourself from the source. So once you remove yourself from the source, now you're going right into the rabbit hole that you've always been in with traditional golf, where you're trying to tinker with the swing and trying to control the movements. And, and it's, it's all in a very well-intended way, but it can't happen. So in the process, there's many levels to it. The initial level is simply becoming aware of the fundamentals for your mind, body, and soul for your golf game. So the body, the body is the technique that we're building and developing. The mind is your strategy and your clarity of focus. And then the soul is your devotion, your desire. How bad do you really want to get better? When I have students who are 20 handicapped say, I want to be a scratch, I say to them, well, I can get you there, but we're going to find out if you really want to be a scratch because it takes that dedication in order to be that good. And so the first level of it is simply just to get clear on a couple things. Mm -hmm.